Beef and Barnsey show, and we're going to do a recap of Weber Cup Day 3 and the finale. As usual, I'm joined by internet personality and Weber Cup star, Stu Williams. How are you today, Stu? I was more Weber Cup participant this year than Weber Cup star. But, <laughs> um, but even in defeat, I did uh, I did win the Beef and Barnsey Derby. Um <laughs> <laughs> had to get that in there wasn't there wasn't much uh to be fair until day three there wasn't many positives for us as a team uh outside of Jesper right. so um yeah a little uh I, I guess the uh day three started off um we had uh Simo starting off with a 300 because you know Europe just needed something else to go wrong <laughs> and then EJ followed it up with a with a pretty good game as well although I this yeah. is he had the front eight also. So they had the front 18, which uh, then he yeah. missed. And then uh, had 20. So, yeah, it was. Uh... Yeah. It was uh, 588. Wasn't the uh, wasn't what we were looking for as a team. Um, you guys went 16, nine up. So that quickly became 18, nine. And uh, it was looking fairly bleak. Um, I have to be honest, from a European perspective. But that's pretty much. The start of the fight back, um, Jasper and uh, Oscu um, became the dream team. I mean, they bowled three games in doubles together, and they bowled eight forty three. Um, yeah, little did we know, which does inflate it a little bit, but it's even worst case scenario of a seven sixty or seven seventy. Well, the first game they had open sheet, so that would have still been two seventy nine. Yeah. <laughs> And oh, then, yeah. And then the, the, the 286 was double six spare sheet. So that would have been 276. And then they had a two spares. So it'd probably been a 250. So yeah, it would have probably been pretty close to an 800 clip. Yeah. So, it, so it's, yeah, as I say, worst case, if it all fell the absolute wrong way, you would have knocked off 80 pins or 90 pins. But with only one miss a game, you can't even knock. It's only an extra 10 anyway. So it's, they shot 8 0, which, you know, the lanes yeah. were decent, but but not. Not that kind of uh, decent. I mean, we were winning and we couldn't put those numbers up for the most part. No. Um, so uh, I guess then um, Jasper started his struggles of the what became his struggles of the day. Um, he um, no, I'm uh, looking at the wrong uh, wrong graphic. You then, you and EJ then took care of Dom and Oscu, uh pretty handily, and it seemed like the momentum was halted pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, Kyle was then playing Thomas, and if Europe had won, probably the biggest turning point of the whole thing. Uh, Kyle was up sure. pretty pretty no, much a game that... No, I completely whacked. I, I completely jinxed Kyle. Because partway through that, Kyle was just pulling okay, but he was up 40. And, like, everything was going wrong for Thomas... Kyle got in a break or two or whatever, and then you know, I I turned to Bill and I went, you know, not that we would, but I I we couldn't extend this thing if we wanted to. And from that point on, nothing went right for about three hours. Shit well, got real, real it, fast. Yeah, I mean, Tom? Kyle, Kyle kind of he had a tough end. Thomas had to, you know, he gave him an opportunity they never should have had. Thomas stepped up, threw a strike that was beyond must have. <laughs> Yeah, and then I mean, we didn't win another point for the end up winning five or six in a row before we won another point. Yeah, because we had uh, myself and Jesper took care of Anthony and Kyle. I feel like Kyle's negativity, not necessarily negativity, but being down on himself. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll bring my gun next time. <laughs> um. Yeah, uh, Kyle's negativity kind of rubbed off, I think, on Simo. Yeah. And um, the next minute, we'd pretty much had that match wrapped up in the fifth frame because you guys had four spares and an open. Yeah, Kyle, I, Simo had had, you know, he'd really had the barriers earlier. And then on the breakdown, his look was much, much different. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, where were you guys when it was losing five in a row? Ah, uh, yeah, no. But I was shocked at how much actually Kyle was 
um, affected by, you know, in the big scheme, it was one loss and it was not, I mean, they're all important, but when you're up by eight or nine, it, it wasn't an important loss. He was sideways. He was completely, and it carried over for the rest of the day. I mean, and I said to Don. You guys said it, you didn't think he'd bowl that well, but when you look back, he'd won a bunch of points the first two days, but from that point on, he was completely different. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like if I didn't know better, I, I don't know for sure, but it felt like he was convinced he was had a really good chance to win the MVP, and you guys were so far ahead that like the younger guys were kind of like, you know, nip and tuck a little bit. You know, it's a nice bragging rights. And when he lost that one, I think he kind of realized he probably wasn't going to win. Uh, Maybe so. I didn't, I didn't have any idea what the points list was. And... There we go. <laughs> this is after Kyle said, we might be bad losers, but at least we're not bad winners. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know how my wife is, you know. Yeah. So then, uh, so <laughs> I mean, I, I was quite happy to take the point because points were quite hard to come by for me and Dom. Um, and then, then we had the game where it was Jesper against Simo, and the other eight of us sat back and gone, "Wow, they're so much better than we are." But it was two two eighty nine to two seventy eight. Um, yeah. that, that was a match for the ages. Watching the two of them, like they just. They just kept pouring strikes in. It was crazy. Yeah. And Simon just had one more miss in there. And uh, and Jesper did what he did pretty much the whole time, which is Jesper of old. And when he gets to play that 10 to 5 thing, and it really didn't seem to matter which pattern it was, that he he was uh, he was more than we could handle, to be honest. That shorter pattern was actually, ironically, was the only one that he actually ever missed the pocket on in uh, three days. Yes. Yeah, which would have been what I would have thought. Yeah. Um, so we came to the night session and we got to pick. So we obviously picked the short pattern, uh, one of the 38 feet patterns. Um, you played against Oscu, uh, first up, um, kind of a weird match really. Um, from what I remember, um, you, you yeah. both kind of both. I, I was playing them too far left because we missed, we missed something in our practice session that you guys had picked up on. And, uh, uh, you know, I realized about halfway through that first game, I'm like, oh, I, I'm I'm a zone too far left right now. And yeah, and we kind of needed a team to play in a little different zone. And so I didn't move there as fast or as committed as I should have and basically end up in no man's land. Yeah, but I mean, with the scoring system, it made both you and Oscar look pretty good. 268, 256. <laughs> yeah, and I felt like he out me by a lot. And I, I actually bowled a fairly good game that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to any of the rest of the day, uh, evening session. But, uh, uh, yeah, my score was not quite indicative of my actual performance that game. And it was it was somewhat close. I, I mean, I guess literally it was a one-hit match, but it didn't really feel like that for sure. Oscar bowled really good, and uh, I didn't, didn't really have an answer for what he was doing. With the um, I did miss one of my favorite parts, actually, of the Weber Cup. So at the end of the previous session, when uh, Jesper had taken care of Simo, so we walked off the stage, we would uh, we decided that we weren't going to engage with Kyle at all. And Kyle made a, oh, you, even your dog's waving things now. And we only saw the dog walk over and then the flag <laughs> came up. Um, um, yeah, so um, we had... Um, we, we had Kyle greet us with... There goes Team Jesper. Yeah. Which I thought for Kyle to say was fairly ironic. Venus, he's bowl, he bowls with Jesper. So he benefits from it in the doubles sure. quite well. So, well, anyway, I mean, to be fair, who else would know better? The fun part of this was when we went away, we decided from that moment on that we were just going to walk into every time we bowled to Jesper's music. We noticed. That was about the same time. It really turned around for everybody. About the same time, the rest of you started scoring about like Jesper was scoring, and and we started scoring like not Jesper. <laughs> so so yeah, so we then had um, Oscar took care of you. Dom uh, bowled against Bill. Um, both of them looked hideous. Um, yeah. Bill threw um, possibly the worst shot he's thrown since he was last on the Weber Cup. 
Um, you know that match? Eight years ago, yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> that was a show I'm like, whoa. I, I turn around and said, I haven't seen that one in uh, in about a decade. Yeah, well, the fun part of that was he threw that shot, and I turned to Dom and I go, who just mulled for Bill O'Neill? And Dom <laughs> turned to me and goes, why because Bill's back? <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah dom took care of that match and then this was also a fairly pivotal match uh because we'd started to build up quite a bit of momentum um i think the score was about eh, 13 13 to 18 oh superman barnes i don't, I don't want you to get anything on you um <sighs> Jesper had the front five against Jesper. He was proud of today. <laughs> Jesper had the front five against EJ, and it felt like that was almost a point in the bag. Right. And then uh, EJ opened, and then he dusted himself off and struck out, I think, from about the sixth fra- the fifth or sixth frame. Mm-hmm. And Jesper didn't have another strike. Um, so that ended up 35-53. Um, yeah, that was, that was a match that, yeah, the same thing. You kind of get to certain matches and go, like the Thomas one, you went, all right, we're 40 ahead with four frames. I guess you're technically not at wood, but you really need to be clean with one strike the rest of the way in your home. And yeah, and a problem. And, right. And, you're, and then that was the same way. You're like, Esper is already up 30, and it's, and then he went flat, flat, flat. Yeah. Six pin or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And then got one overhooked a little, and like, oh, and EJ, you know, I mean, I, I thought EJ was, you know, the only reasons I guess anybody could say, hey, maybe you don't pick EJ for that thing was because his TV record mm-hmm. had been stellar. And I can identify with that. But in this thing, basically every time he needed to, to throw a good one, he did. The one time he lost to Jesper, he left a really dirty nine pin. Uh, well, I mean, it felt like Jesper struggled a little bit in that last session. But comparatively, yes, comparatively Everybody else on your team except EJ, right? Uh, in that session, mm-hmm. he just kept having to bowl EJ. Uh, yeah, EJ yeah. really came up big for you in that last session. He won all three of his points, um, all three against Jesper, one doubles. Um, yeah. and that's that's huge. Is actually, we, we we actually won more against Jesper than it felt like we did, mm-hmm. even though Jesper still had a million points, it felt like at the same time. Well, because he just bowled so much. He did bowl so much. And and there was never a rollover. Matt, I mean, Jesper never gave a point. And, oh, no. he was, and even the ones where he beat us, we didn't really give him too many of them. He he had he to try. Two, two or three roll-offs as well, uh, right. which was kind of crazy. He, he had um, a bunch of roll-offs. He had almost every match was a one-shot match, and he came up big, you know, in all of them. Pretty much time. every time, yeah. Right. And so – but it just wasn't free, so even he had to grind. It wasn't. It wasn't just. Maybe we had a go scoring system. It might have been more, but, but uh, yeah, he never got a free off match, and so he he looked a little bit worn down by the end too. Yeah, uh, well, you would be. He had to win every point. I was about to say carrying me is strong enough, but then he had uh, at least a couple of other friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Dom uncharacteristically struggled the first day. Oscar struggled the first day also. And then Oscar turned around. It's the best I've seen him bowl in five years. Yeah, Oscar, Oscar bowled quite well, actually, day three in Vegas last year. Um, mm-hmm. Once he got the urethane out and he really committed to it and stuff. Um, so then we had a doubles match, you and Kyle against Oscar and Thomas. I don't really remember that match too much. Um, Thomas and Oscar came out on top, I think. The reason why I didn't remember it too much was because this was one of the few patterns that I felt like I had a good look on. Like I felt pretty confident after the practice session. Yeah. But really, the only reason I didn't go out second was because I was saying to Dom, look, you sitting on the bench for longer isn't going to get you back in rhythm. And if we're going to win, we need you to start bowling well. Yeah. So the closer you bowl to the practice session, the better. I've got a much better look than you've got, but it's not going to help us. Like you've got to come out of it. So we stuck Dom out second and he got that point against Bill. And then I was bowling Simo. Now I would say on our team, I've probably got the best record against Simo. Even if it's not necessarily wins, all the matches I play against him are pretty close because I kind of 
not exactly, but kind of play the the angles, especially on the like the burn matches a little bit, kind yeah. of similarly to he does. So at least it forces him to have some sort of transition during the match. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, well, to put it frankly, I got fucked. Yeah, it, it, I mean, you, you, we could talk about the nine pin that the EJ left, but that ten pin you left was it, it got moved, spun, and yeah. and shifted on a lane where none of that happened. You either touched it and they fell over, or they didn't, and it was yeah. You know, I, I mean, even a situation where it was getting close and everybody tends to count the good breaks for the other team only and their own, own bad breaks only, you know, all of us went, oh. Yeah. Because I already felt before I got up in the 10th frame that I really only had to hit the lane and I deserved to win. Like, because Simo strikes early on in the match, certainly when, and of course the thing is, is in a normal match, it wouldn't have really mattered. Mm-hmm. But in that scoring system, the difference between a spare in the first frame and a strike in the first frame is huge. Yeah, it's like getting a double. Right. So, you know, he had a couple of he, he started off with the wrong ball basically. Right. He threw a urethane ball for two shots and he went really yeah. high, trip four ish. The big four and then he tripped the four. Right. And then he goes, Yeah, that one's not right. And he switched <laughs> yeah. and threw the next one flush. And we're like Yeah, when, yeah you're you're just yeah, feeling you're just- it. You're just a different guy. So anyway, that that kind of felt like to us that that was like kind of good night, really. Um, because if we'd have had one of those two matches between me and Jesper go, we'd have only been two down. And if we'd have had both of them go our way, we'd have been at 20 apiece. Yeah, at one point I've been 20. That's why I remember going, man, those are so big. The only points we won were both stolen. And, and this thing was really close to being a shot for shot and going down to a, a draw of the hat. And guys going in blind, and it didn't matter what we picked. We knew Jesper was going to be yeah. in one match, and he was going to be playing the same place he's been playing the rest of the time. So any win there would have been a long shot. So yeah, and then uh, Dom played. Uh, Dom and Jesper played against Bill and EJ, and Dom had his second viral moment of the uh, weekend. So early on in the weekend, he spared the big four. And uh, you can check that video out on Weber Cup's social media. That w- that was huge. Loads of views. And then uh, we have possibly the most bizarre but impressive spare of all time. Yeah. He managed to uh, have the ball hang on his thumb. Uh, he had a, a, a switch grip. Uh, he pulled the outer out. Yeah, it was an odd, uh, the complete freak. Yeah. The thing. ball went probably about. 10 feet in the air, about 35 feet down the lane. And when you do that, it never spares it, ever. Well, Dom's thumbhole came out the ball a little bit, so it was a little proud. And as it was rolling down, it clipped the thumbhole and put it back on line, and it took the seven pin straight clean right in the yeah, middle. Yeah, it got it just enough to not make it bounce and just, just kind of straighten it up instead of rolling over into the gutter because it came off, and obviously it's going like this, and then all of a sudden kind of... Goes and then it got on the side and it just kind of rolled forward. And, I, and McNeil, I guess, started talking about it being illegal, or whatever. And the guy, the, the producer's going, Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Stop talking. We don't have a referee. You, you, we can't know. Stop talking. <laughs> and, uh, McNeil said he, hadn't, he didn't even know that system worked. <laughs> no, he's, he's, been, he's 37 matches into this thing. He didn't know the producer could even talk to him. <laughs> he's getting screamed at in his ear to mm. stop talking. It was pretty funny. So uh, um, then we went back on the fresh for the, this was the last three matches on uh, our pattern before we were going to redraw. Um, Jesper took care of Kyle pretty handily. Um, Dom and Paul, awful match. Uh, both of you look um, horrible, to be honest. Dom, Dom had the excuse, and it was probably a pretty fair one that. He wasn't really 100% sure how his thumb felt about being in the ball for about a second too long previously on that spare shot. Um, towards the end, he started to loosen up and he got his hand doing what it was supposed to do. Yeah. Um, you uh, you managed to go Brooklyn a couple of times. Um, yeah. It was just really crossed up. I moved in a little bit. I left it. Actually, fine. I started throwing a little. Actually, O'Neill helped me a little bit. I, okay. And then I threw some decent ones and I left a couple of 10 pins, which evened out the, the Brooklyns. And then I, by then I was pretty much out. So then I moved back to the right just to make sure I didn't trash the lane for EJ. 
And then uh, we had Probably too many shots in as it was. Yeah. There's... So then it was Jasper against EJ again. And then it was going to be, I believe it was going to be Thomas against Simo uh, would have been the next match. Mm-hmm. Me and Bill and then whatever. So uh, we were still like really like to use one of our songs, Living on a Prayer. Um, Jasper played EJ. Um, Jasper started off good kind of had the same deal where, you know, he got a little bit of carry down. It was a little difficult to know. He was kind of, the pitch black wasn't really the right ball. And I the feel like it had too much surface on it for the short. Yeah, but his other one didn't really want to work. And then he yeah, tried. I, I get it. I saw you put surface on it right at the end. And it, it made it look really good for six frames where it didn't look as good. But the back half of every game, it just looked like it, it didn't want to go through him anymore. And then when he got up next to it, it made it too quick. He was stuck a little bit. So the same yeah. thing happens to right handers a lot where he, the breakpoint window just got too close to him and he couldn't quite manage it around it. And uh, I mean, if this would have been a normal session and we'd have been like picking that match, because like nine matches in, it's kind of hard to pick. You have no idea what it's going to be like by then. We, yeah. we probably wouldn't have put Jesper in that match because mm-hmm. it kind of, it hadn't really worked that well for him. Like right. so maybe playing him a little earlier when because it seems like you you guys between Simon and EJ have or can figure the medium patterns out pretty well on the burn. On the longer ones, it doesn't really work out so good from Brun. The medium ones, they kind of it doesn't feel like it should, but it ends up being that it's quite good for the third match. And yes, but just didn't he it I think he was just tired, like mentally and physically. I mean, he'd been carrying us for two days straight. And, and losing, I, I do. I do think losing sometimes affects him not as as violently as it did Kyle, but I do think it it, it turns his medium around a little bit. <laughs> they weren't able to come over. They were going to come to England this year, and they're just they they missed out. And so it's okay. I've, I've got my notebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I got nothing. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just think that to put that much in, I mean, for yeah. perspective, EJ won the MVP trophy, I think, with six points, and Jesper had nine points. And Jesper didn't win a point in the final session. Right. And we're in the first session. No, he did the final point of the first session. Yeah. I mean, until that session, um, I, this was kind of what I was telling our boys. We actually won. Every single last match of every session. Uh-huh. So I said, we just need to do that in session six. Well, there you go. Because yeah. if we win the last match we of the won session, game, we won. You win the last game, then you won. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't to be. We gave you way too much of a head start on day one. Um, a lot spoke about those first six matches. But even still, you beat us 4-3 the next seven matches as well. You, you were up 10-3. Um, after the first night and I mean realistically that's just way too much of a head start to give anybody and we've done that before and we've we've got away with it a couple of times but when it was like when you were able to kind of solidify that lead in that second session maybe for us if we'd have had a day to be able to kind of lick uh, or night to lick our wounds and come back into it Mm -hmm. it might have been different but once you're able to like like kind of a little bit more matches yeah it kind of, it it became too much, and yeah, you know we've got to uh, we've got to get together as a team and figure out how we can have better starts because realistically, I can't remember the last time we led um, <laughs> early on in the Weber Cup. So um, yeah, uh, let's see if I had any more notes. Um, uh, no, I don't think so. It was just. It was mainly like I would say the star of uh, looking at looking at the way it went down. I would say um, if I was going to do star of the day, I would have said that day one um, the USA star was probably Bill O'Neill. Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, he he came out. He won all four of his games. Um, set the table winning that first game against Jesper. When mm-hmm. realistically, I don't think either team necessarily expected that to be the result i don't think that they were saying he couldn't right but we could see what what jesper had and yeah we've seen that show before so um, um then day two i think uh 
I mean, a star was born with Thomas Larson uh, coming out, shooting the 288 to the 278 against EJ. But uh, overall, it felt like um, that was kind of a uh, a Jesper Svensson day, I would have said. Yeah. Um, he he was very dominant during kind of single-handedly, game. along with some help from Oscu. Kept, yeah. Kept it even and kept it from getting out of hand. Yeah, I mean, he lost the one match against you. Um, but that was my highlight was that was the complete unexpected, you know, yeah. long shot win. By far, well, you know, the end of the tournament. I think the day three, probably, if we're being fair about it, belongs to EJ Tackett. I mean, even with us kind of having the momentum and kind of getting around it, he shot 288 in singles against me, 278 in his next doubles. Then he bowled uh, 253 to take out Jesper, 265 to take out Jesper in doubles, and then 278 to finish it off. He was pretty devastating. Yeah, no, I think he and, – and then Oscar was the one that I thought made the biggest difference. He really solidified so Jesper didn't have to win every point. It felt like from our side, we didn't really have an answer for him, but especially on the last pattern. Uh, yeah, I think, the, I think the thing for you guys was that, like – you kind of had the trick with EJ in the third match, and we had the trick with Oscar on the fresh. Yeah, we didn't have any way of really beating him on the fresh. And then our, you know, our strategy was he had the best look once they broke down a little bit. Was basically just we thought we were going to play more in the track, which ended up being a bad play. But that they were going to help him for him to so give him a fair fight. But uh, yeah, well, it was it was it was kind of weird for us when we were picking those matches because we knew that we were going to put Oscar out first. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, if Jesper hadn't bowled quite as well as he had done, I think there would have been I would have bowled a lot more matches. Right. It was really difficult to say, you hey, you, you've won one match. Hey, we're going to put you in an extra match. Right. But like of the guys throwing reactive, I had the best look on our team by far on that pattern. Mm-hmm. Like that was the one time I felt like actually confident I could throw it pretty much anywhere I wanted to the right. And I'd hit the pocket every time. And that was like the first time where it was like, okay, I can be really aggressive with it. I don't need to worry about, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. That's why we play. We, uh, we have a fierce rivalry when we're on the lanes, but, you know, overall, I thought that you guys bowled better for the, you know, the uh, the totality of the event. And it was probably an okay score overall. I think that it could have got really embarrassing for us at one point. And it could have also got really spectacular and had another 2014 for you to get reminded about. But, <laughs> you know, if ifs and buts were China Cups and whatever else you want to say, uh, it wasn't. You guys won 23-18. I thought it was a um, – given the circumstances, I thought it was probably one of the better Weber Cups. Um, you know, trying to get that the product out there. Um, I felt like everybody at Matchroom did an incredible job of, you know, creating the bubble scenario. Um, you can see how much experience they have with all of their other events in that scenario, yeah. I guess. It's a, it's a crazy kind of thing, all the extra things that go into what – what goes into that and for them to be able to put it together was, uh, you know, j- just appreciative that they did and uh, all the last minute details that come up and you have to, you know, they, I, I'm a planner guy. So I, I struggle sometimes when it gets so chaotic and so last minute things that just, there's no way to prepare for some of them. And uh, uh, I thought they did a pretty good job reacting to most of that and, and getting us in an environment that was, you know, Everybody was uh, was negative on the tests, and yeah. you know, there was not really any score that could have changed throughout. So, uh, about safely, you can put an event in in this kind of scenario. And uh, uh, like I said, I just think we got a chance to do it. Hopefully, next year we can do it with fans. Yeah, out in Vegas, no doubt we'll hear Anderson and his kicker. Yeah, um, a little preview or a post view of uh, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I think the one thing I will say about the Weber Cup this year that I think was the hardest thing for me to get used to, and I think you to you as well, was it's been a long time. Like, I've only ever bowled the Weber Cup one time when it was five man team when in 2005. Uh, the last, the next time I came in, it was down to four. And it's a really odd scenario of how little you actually bowl. 
Yeah, unless you're like, there's enough fan choice stuff, and Jesper was consistently in, so he was in a lot. And then Kyle was in most of those as well. But for the rest of us, I'd forgotten how little you actually bowl in, in a lot of that. And so, you, like you say, you got out of whack early. Dom was not, you know, he, he was out of rhythm, and, and it was, it's just very difficult to get yourself back into rhythm when you bowl one, one, one and a half games. And well, then- in, in the first three sessions, I had two of those sessions. I bowled one doubles game. Yeah. So, yeah, was- Simo didn't hardly bowl at all at the beginning. He was yeah, it didn't seem like accident. he worried too much about it. <laughs> no, no, he was just, he was kind of jet lagged, and so all right, we'll just push you back a little bit, and then we'll we'll save up your your stuff till we're back in control of the pattern, and then we're just going to roll you out. And then we rolled him out, and he started off with three hundred. So you know, well, maybe look really smart that way, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it was uh, like I say, it was a uh, it was it it was a cool match. Both teams fought till the end. Um, the one thing I will say, the one, the one thing, uh, that I've read, I've seen on social media and I have to defend our team a little bit was the first night they had an idea for that fans choice singles. Yeah. And they asked us to change out of our shirts. Now Europe were the only people who had their shirts down at the lanes. Right. And I don't know why they did it, but they did. And when we get asked to do something, we just do it because there's plenty of times that, you take those sh- camera shots or whatever, and you feel like an idiot. And then you watch it on the screen. You're like, wow, that looks cool. But at the time it feels awkward ass. Yeah. That didn't really work. Uh, cool. Yeah, no, it, it had a bad vibe to it because of the circumstance. You guys were way down. It was 10 two at the time. Yeah. You guys are all off shirts. We all have ours still on because but you didn't have any shirts to change into yeah, right? because of the way the practice sessions worked we practiced right up until showtime. So we didn't wear anything else. You know, we, we wore those for practice. And so we still had them and nobody, we didn't bring one down. And so nobody said anything until yeah, nobody knew. Before. So I think one or two had shirts. And so we decided as a group, well, only two people have them. We're just not going to do it. Well, I mean, cause it would look weird, really weird to have half and then half. And then, so we just stayed as a unit and then, you know, and there was, it was just a last minute idea. And yeah, it ended up, ended up backfiring in, in social media. It came out like you guys had given up. And that certainly wasn't the case. That's, it was just what you were asked to do. And we, we, we you were good yeah. but and I know that Jasper was really upset about it. And, and to be honest, it was water off a duck's back to me. I couldn't really care less, like what they're saying. It's, it is what it is. But I know that like some of the guys in our group got a little bit upset about it. And yeah. Like I say, these things sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And principally, a good rule of thumb is just think about it logically. Yeah. We are the comeback kings. Why why would we be throwing it in day one? We're always behind on day one. <laughs> like, you know, we've been in worse situations than that and came out with the trophy. So like Yeah. You, know, you were a little less chirpy this year than in years past. Well, I didn't bowl. Yeah, you didn't bowl a lot. Your record was was tricky, and there wasn't a lot of crowd, so it's it's hard to. It's just I mean, it was a real it was a real weird scenario. We we spoke about it a little bit, and it's just like there wasn't really. It was just the way the situation was, mm-hmm. and you know, you you guys have certain personalities who respond to stuff better. If Tommy's there, maybe it's different seems to work out pretty good for me when I start chirping at Tommy. Yeah, overall, yeah, hasn't worked out that well for me chirping at you. <laughs> didn't need to. You didn't say anything. You just beat me. So. No, but, but that's what I'm saying. Just like, it's just right. overall. Some know. people respond differently to that. Yeah. And, and yeah, in the way it was working out, you didn't need to at some of the people that you would have. And, and I, it got me the other way enough by the end that it, I mean, like, to be fair, like at the time, you guys were way ahead of us. One, two, all your guys are at the top 10 in points, and most of our teams at the 30s in points. What do we have to chirp about? Yeah, it, it was a, yeah. I mean, so when you guys got it, Bill, the last time you were there, but Bill's in a much different position 
exactly. And it, years, yeah, he's not different. Yeah. If, no, five years ago, it doesn't lend him to be very um, thin skinned anymore. <laughs> well, the other thing as well as though is, is it might have been different if we'd have got him in some of those matches where it would have put him in a bad spot. Yeah. Like if he'd have bowled a couple more matches on the final day, I don't think he really knew what he was doing on that pattern. Like he didn't have a good grasp of it. No, we were all. Oh, and it's, we easy poor job. Job. it's easy to be super chilled and look like everything's changed when everything's working. Yeah. Like, Jesper didn't, didn't look like there was a whole lot we could do to Jesper to shake him up. No, Jesper. Yeah. I, 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 that was the most impressive Weber Cup performance ever by anybody, one side or the other. He literally bowled by himself for a day. Like, yeah, Oscar came in for that one doubles match and bowled really good. But overall, yes, but basically bowled against five really good bowlers by himself. Two, three. Yeah. Sessions two, three, and four. He basically kept the thing in play. Yeah. And, and like I say, and Oscar stepped up to the plate and he, and, he, and he bowled really good. But at the same time, it's like, yes, but was just, he was in his zone. Yeah. Doing his thing. And like I say, I, I when I bowled you in that match, Jesper was literally there, like begging me, sure. come on, you could do this. Just one yeah. good shot. You he, can Jay Coward. Another one. Another one. <laughs> when I when I was and sat there, do it too. Another yeah, when, one. <laughs> yeah, when I was sat there waiting to bowl the 10 frame, I took a little bit of extra time. The only thing Jesper didn't do was get down on his knees and beg me to throw a strike. He's like, mate, come on. We just need one person. We need you. Just one shot. It's not a lot to ask. You've been absolutely useless for the whole time. Just throw one strike. He looked more happy that I did it than I was. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you uh, did. Congratulations. Really happy for you. Super. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it. I'm sure I won't hear about it again next year. So uh, my kids even trolled me. So yes. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Tuesday. All right. Next Tuesday, we're going to go back to live. Uh, be 10 a.m. Central, and uh, we'll have a special guest, probably someone from the World Cup. Uh, we'll probably rehash a little bit of this weekend's TV shows, and uh, which will be the opening round of the other side of the bracket, the round of 24. There'll be one of the brackets there, and. Uh, let you know what happened and how it happened and why it happened, perhaps. And uh, uh, yeah, and then a little bit more Weber Cup information from the other side of the uh, of the action. So uh, uh, until then, I guess uh, enjoy your weekend and uh, uh, the cool weather that seems to be approaching everywhere across the country right now. So yeah, take it easy, guys, and we'll uh, come back to the channel. Hit a like on the video. We like seeing those. There you go. There you go. And so then, support small businesses, especially bowling, and our sponsors Storm, Rotogrip, Nine Hour Global, Dexter, 3G Shoes, uh, Vice Grip, Turbo, Coolwick, and Bowler's Mark. He's getting good at that, peeps. All right. All right. <laughs> so All right. Stay, stay healthy. God bless. Bye.